Hello and welcome to our guide on chest tube insertions. We will go over all the tips and tricks to be successful while inserting a, a chest tube in patients on the floor or in the operating room. We will review some considerations prior to placing the chest tube, as well as positioning, landmarks, and technique. There are a few important patient factors to consider before proceeding with chest tube insertion. First is the stability of the patient. Can the chest tube be done safely on the floor? or should it be done in the operating room? Is the tube being placed for air or fluid? For air, the tube should be directed apically. For fluid, the tube should be directed posteriorly. This can be posterior apical or basilar. Is the collection loculated? Has the patient had prior chest tube or chest surgery that can result in adhesions? Does the patient have an elevated hemidiaphragm, diaphragmatic paralysis, or even tration? Or do they have significant consolidation or atelectasis, as these can all result in an intra-abdominally placed tube if it is not accounted for? Is the patient anticoagulated, and is there time for reversal? Is the patient on positive pressure ventilation? Additionally, always consider your pain management plan ahead of time. Give the patient a dose of pain medications 30 minutes before, and make liberal use of local anesthesia, with each layer, particularly in your awake patients. Preparation is key. Before beginning any procedure, make sure that you have everything that you think you're going to be requiring. Supplies for the chest tube placement. Always take an extra stitch. Have your chest tube atrium and have your local anesthesia with all of it drawn up. Always have someone in the room with you for the procedure. This should always include a nurse and if you can, another resident. It is helpful to have the thorax as flat as possible or even flexed to open the rib spaces as much as possible. Placing a small bump under the back and positioning the arm over the head are very helpful maneuvers. Here is our patient. We always begin by taking time to identify our landmarks. To help orient, the patient's head is to the right of the screen and her feet are to the left. It is always important to identify your landmarks, even in an emergency situation, because you want the tube to go in quickly and into the right place. This time up front is well spent and saves the time and the effort of a poorly placed tube. We start by identifying the tip of the scapula. This can be accomplished by pushing down on the shoulder to gently move the scapula against your finger. Mark that spot. Next, feel for the anterior superior iliac spine. Between these two points is going to help you to identify your mid-axillary line. It is ideal to place chest tubes in front of this line for patient comfort so that they're not laying on the chest tube. There are, of course, some special circumstances in which an alternate location will be required, in particular if you're aiming for a loculation, and sometimes you are limited by casting or hardware. Next, identify the nipple or, and the inframammary or pectoral crease. This is the line in which you're going to be placing your chest tube. Next, identify the 12th rib. This is going to help you approximate the lie of the diaphragm. Remember that the dome of the diaphragm can be as high as T4 or even more elevated in certain disease processes. These can include diaphragmatic paralysis, diaphragmatic eventration. It is essential to know your patient's history and to review your radiology very carefully before beginning your procedure. Sometimes having the chest x-ray on the screen in the room is also very helpful. Lateral to the nipple is a safe place in most patients for chest tube insertion. Before even beginning to prep or drape your patient, plan your incision. It can be very helpful to use a marking pen to mark out your incision before you even begin to make sure that you have a very firm idea of where you want to place your tube. When draping, always make sure to keep your landmarks in view so that you can plan your incision or change accordingly. 
always make sure that you have an adequately inci a sized incision. Here that you can see that we are planning an incision that has adequate room for us to introduce both our finger and the chest tube to allow us to help direct the tube and ensure accurate placement. Note that our incision is going to be approximately two and a half centimeters, maybe a little bit larger in some patients, to allow careful insertion of the chest tube. The timeout is essential. Verify your patient, laterality, that you have all of your equipment, and that you have adequate help in the room. This is a point at which you can have your assistant start setting up the atrium. Remember, an extra set of hands to help prep, drape, hand your instruments, hold the chest tube while you're securing it into place is always a great idea. Always take someone with you if you can. Knife technique, please note the proper way to hold the scalpel. This allows for a controlled incision. For patients who are intubated and asleep, you have the benefit of general anesthesia. For awake patients on the floor, Chest tube insertion can be performed in a comfortable manner without the use of sedation if local is performed properly. Skin must be anesthetized and allow adequate time for the medication to take effect. As dissection is carried down to the chest wall, each layer should be anesthetized, followed by the pleura again, allowing time after each step for the local to take effect. Have all 30 mLs drawn up ahead of time and ready to use. In particularly deep patients, a Kelly clamp can be used to help identify the path the needle needs to follow. Our incision is created. Blunt dissection is carried down to the chest wall. A finger can be used to help identify the top part of the rib. Remember that the intercostal artery, vein, and nerve run along the underside of the rib, and injury to these vessels can result in a significant amount of bleeding. The chest should be entered bluntly with a hemostat or curved Kelly clamp or even your finger. Brace your dominant hand with your second hand to avoid advancing the clamp too far into the chest, risking injury to the lung or even the heart on the left side. Dilate the track, starting at the level of the pleura, backing into the muscle, the sub-Q, all the way up to the level of the skin. Perform a finger sweep to confirm that there are no adhesions. Insert the chest tube using a Kelly clamp or your finger to guide the tube into the desired location. Apical for air, posteriorly for fluid, or into the specifically desired collection. In an awake patient, the finger can be very helpful in directing the chest tube away from the fissure and keeping it along the chest wall. Securing the tube is very important, just as important as placing the tube. We like to secure our tubes with a large silk suture. It is important to take large bites of the skin, as you can see us doing, so that the tube will not be pulled and the suture will not be pulled through the skin. Tie many knots. Once you have a little bit of a trail, go around this chest tube several times. Cinch down to create a small waist on the chest tube. Not enough that you're going to impede drainage, but enough to hold the chest tube securely. Put a couple of additional knots, then go around a second time to re-secure the tube. Chest tubes should never accidentally fall out due to an inadequately secured tube. We use a second suture to close incisions if there's an additional space because you want to avoid any extrusion of fluid or the introduction of air. Always bring an extra stitch just in case you need it. Connect your chest tube to your atrium and band it to ensure that it does not become disconnected accidentally. We place a Vaseline gauze around the base of the chest tube in the case of air leaks. If there is no air leak, then you can go directly to gauze. We place a piece of gauze underneath the chest tube to buttress it a little bit from the wall, followed by gauze on top, and secure everything with Tegaderm or tape. 
The dressing should be air and watertight. Always perform an x-ray to confirm the position of your tube and the effectiveness of your intervention. In summary, it is important to know your indication for chest tube placement. Know any factors that make your patient higher risk, bleeding, previous surgery, and if they have an elevated hemidiaphragm. Be prepared and take help. Position your patient carefully and identify your landmarks. Place the chest tube carefully and secure it well. And finally, always obtain a chest x-ray to confirm the placement and the effectiveness of intervention. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.